Hi guys, Zach here, and welcome to the fifth unit on our Java Wizard course. And today, what we're going to do is look at creating actual levels for our game. So if we go ahead and run the game now, as you can see, we have our player that can move around and do whatever we'd like, but we have nothing to interact with. And it would be a lot simpler if we could actually design a level and say an editor. But let's not go through the troubles of creating an entire editor in our game to make levels, which I've done before in the past, and it's actually very, very uh, time-consuming. And it's not even really that good unless you really spend a lot of time into it uh, to make it really cool. Uh, so this method I'm going to show you now is going to be perfect unless you want to maybe have you know some very huge game that you're building, and you kind of need a level editor to test things out and uh, just time-efficient wise. But uh, th this is going to be really good for at least the size of this project and uh, probably a lot bigger as well. So uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to open up paint.net. And now you can use paint.net, you can use paint, you can use Photoshop, whatever you'd like. Uh, and I'm going to create a new file. It's going to be 64 by 64. I'm going to make it black. Go ahead and zoom in here all right and then what we're gonna do is essentially we use this picture as our level editor so it's really cool actually so uh, let's get this stuff out of the way what I can actually do is now let's say if I paint red the idea is to import this image into our game read every pixel color in our game uh, or in our in our file and then according on the pixel color create blocks in that position so um, I went ahead and did the quick math there and pretty much our game view what we're gonna start off by seeing is 32 blocks in width so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, and then about 18 uh, in height. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. All right, right there. So if we actually draw this out, this is our game screen right here. And this is what we can see. So if, uh, if I go ahead and let's say in our editor here, we copy this and paste it. So we put it like that, like that, like that, and we create sort of like a little game world here. And let's make some doorways. Make another one over here, maybe. We'll make this pretty large. And then maybe we'll add some blocks inside here. I don't know, just something, whatever we'd like. There we go, that looks good. And then let's use like the blue color. Let's make sure that it's completely blue. Put it like right there. And that'll be our player. So essentially what we've done here is we've created this this um, this file this is going to be our world in our game and this is we can move around and every red pixel you see here is going to be a block our blue character is going to be where our player starts and then in future updates we can add enemies we can add crates we can do all a whole bunch of stuff right it's gonna be really cool so let's go ahead I'm gonna save this Just put in my documents here I'm gonna name it um, wizard underscore level and there we go. If I go back into my uh, editor here in Eclipse, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder. So I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to name it Res. And then I'm going to right click on our Wizard Game Project, go to Properties, Java Build Path, Libraries, and I'm going to add a class folder. And I'm going to add this Res folder. So it's completely linked up to our project. Alright, 
Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is just go and find that file and drag it right in there. So copy it so now you can see our wizard level and if we open it up we got a whole bunch of randomness there. So there's going to be our wizard level.png. Make sure it's saved as a PNG file as well. Uh, and now we can go ahead and begin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new class and we're going to create this class to uh, load our image, right? So I'm going to name it buffered image loader. And in here I'm going to have a private buffered image. I'm just name it image. And then I'm going to have control shift O to import that. Then I'm going to have uh, just a method public buffered image load image. And then here we have string path. And then here what I can say is image equals image io dot read get class dot get resource and that will be our path. And then we're just going to return the image. Oops, we actually need to put that inside the method. Return image. All right, and then we're getting a little error here because we need to add a try and catch to this in case it fails. And that's our buffered image loader class right there. Pretty simple. So now we can go ahead and load this in our game class. So here I'm going to create a private buffered image. I'm going to name it sprite sheet. It's going to equal null to begin with. And now, uh, control shift O to import the buffered image. And now what we're going to do is actually load this up. Right? So uh, here, <clears throat> right after the key listener, I'm going to say buffered image loader. Loader equals a new buffered image loader. All right, because we want to make a new instance of that. And then we're going to say, um, actually, let's name this level. I don't know why I named it sprite sheet. I'm going to say level equals loader dot load image. And then our path is going to be forward slash and then the name of our file. So wizard underscore level dot PNG. And if we go ahead and run the game, as you can see, we get no errors, which is good. And if you do get an error, make sure your res folder is linked. Make sure you have the exact same file name as your actual file in the string here. And then also, if it doesn't work, maybe try moving this, this chunk of code around a little bit. Sometimes it is a little bit picky. So now we have our image loaded. So now what can we do with this image? How can we make it work? Well, first off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new class and I'm going to name this block. And I'm just going to extend the game object. And I just want to make this a block so that, uh, so that we have something to actually generate with those red pixels. Here we are. Get rid of all this override stuff here. Uh, then let's return the new rectangle. X, Y, 32, 32. And then let's draw in a G dot set color. We'll say color dot black. And then we'll say G dot fill rect, X, Y, 32, 32. All right, and that will just be our block there. So now what we can do is in our game class, we can actually load up this level all the way down here. So I'm gonna just comment in loading the level. And here I'm gonna create a private void load level. And the parameters, I'm gonna have a buffered image, image. And then here what we're gonna do is we're gonna say int w equals image dot get width, because we wanna get the width of our image. H equals image dot get height. And then we're just gonna do a double for loop, right? So for int xx equals zero xs is less less than our width xx plus plus and then for int yy equals zero yy is less than our height yy plus plus and now here what we can do is we can say int pixel equals image dot get rgb xx yy oops 
and then here we're going to use red equals pixel and then we're going to use the bit operator and 0x ff we're going to do the same thing for green pixel and then instead we're going to do 8 here and we're going to do 0x ff and then we're going to use blue and that's going to equal pixel um, and 0x ff so it kind of goes down um, by this uh, <clears throat> squared here so 16 8 and then nothing here all right so now with that code all we have to do is check hey what are our different values here and then if so let's if the values are correct then let's let's make it right so if I say red equals 255 I could say handler dot add object new block and I could say XX multiplied by 32, YY multiplied by 32, and then our ID is block. Simple as that, right? So now I can also say if blue equals 255, handler.add object, new player, not player, wizard, XX multiplied by 32, YY multiplied by 32, ID dot player, and handler. And now let's run the game. And we don't get anything because actually, we didn't even call this method. So let's do that now. I'm gonna get rid of this handler.add object, and I'm gonna call the message or the, the method load level level. And now if we run the game, as you can see, we now have our player in the game as well as our blocks that we can now interact with. Now there is no collision, we haven't set anything up yet. And this actually does extend all the way to the left and right. Next unit, what we're going to do is look into a game camera that we can follow around the world now. We can look all around the world and see what's going on with it. Uh, but for now, we have a level that is completely loaded from our PNG file. So as you can see here is that what we're looking at right now, just that little, that little level we looked at. All right.